Good morning, everyone. As always, place a cross on first, no matter what's going on in your life. If you live for Christ, live for Christ. If you love him, show you love him. And that's exactly what I'm going to be talking about today. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom the power and the glory forever amen i probably read this a few weeks ago but i'm gonna read it again i feel like god put it in my mind today first mm -hmm. john chapter four these verses are so specific, but you really have to read it in context. And sometimes you got to read the first chapter and the chapter before it. And sometimes you got to read the chapter afterwards to get the full context of what God is trying to tell you. Chapter four. I preach this so much and it's just in my heart. Mm. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God. Because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Hereby know ye the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ is coming in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ is coming in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist. Whereof you have heard that it should come. And even now already is in the world. So that's one. That's one way to know if somebody's of God or not. But he's not finished yet. Ye are of God, the little children, and have overcome them. Because greater is he that is in you that is, than he that is in the world. They are of the world. Therefore speak they of the world. And the world heareth them. We are of God. He that knoweth God heareth us. He that is not of God heareth not us. Hereby we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Now let's go into the next, next one. Beloved, let us love one another. For love is of God. And everyone that loveth is born of God. And knoweth God. These are very specific instructions and specific information. He that loveth not knoweth not God. For God is love. So first of all, they got to believe in Jesus. And they got to show love. Mm. And this was manifest the love of God towards us. Because that God sent his only begotten son in the world. That we might live through him. Herein is love. Not that we love God. But that he loved us and sent his son to be propitiation for our sins. Beloved. If God so loved us. We ought also to love one another. So what follows this is like giving you an order. First things first. Jesus Christ, the head of your life. You accept Jesus in your life. Hmm. Second, you learn to love people. Hmm. Hmm. Beloved, if God so loved us, we are also to love one another. No man has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God dwelleth in us and his love is perfect, perfected in us. Hereby know we that we dwell in him and he in us because he have given us his spirit. Now, one thing you're going to understand, if you truly receive the Holy Spirit of God, eventually in time, your love is going to be perfected towards the love you show to other people, not just Christians, anyone. Because his spirit is love. And we have seen and do testify that the Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. Whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God, God dwelleth in him and he in God. Now, and we have known and believed the love that God hath to us. God is love. And he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God, God in him. Herein is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment. Because as he is, so are we in this world. Now check this out. There's no fear in love. But perfect love casteth out 
fear. <laughs> because fear has torment. You know why a lot of times we fight a lot of battles inside our head? Because love is not made perfect. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. We love him because he first loved us. If a man say I love God and hateth his brother, he is a liar. For he that loveth not his brother, whom he hath seen, how can he love God whom he hath not seen? And this commandment have we from him, that he who loveth God loveth his brother also. I'm not finished. Go to chapter 5. Now, here's something else. Whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of God, and everyone that loveth him that begot, loveth him also that is begotten of him. By this we know that we love the children of God. When love, when we love God and keep his commandments. Right, watch what he says. For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments. And his commandments are not grievous. Now listen. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Hmm. Look at the order. How do you overcome the, overcome the world? By this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and keep his commandments. If you're not willing to keep God's commandments, and look what he said. His commandments are not grievous. All right, let's go to his commandments. Let's hear this story. Really pay attention to what's being told to you today. And God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Okay. If you love me, you keep my commands. How is the love of God perfected? Eventually in life, as you keep calling on God and keep praying for God and his spirit keep overwhelming you, first hate, hatred is going to start moving out of your life. You're going to stop hating people and you're going to start keeping his commandments. That's how the love of God is perfected to us. I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of God. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. You won't worship nobody. That's going to deceive. That's going to cease. You know when, before you loved God, you had your favorite artist, you had your favorite idol. Now, let me tell you something. Mm -hmm. If you love God, you're going to start doing away with idolatry. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt make, not make unto thee any graven image, or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. Now, listen closely to what he says. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord, thy God, am a jealous God. And listen closely. Visiting the inequity of the fathers upon the children to the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. Now listen. Real closely. Visiting the inequity of the fathers upon the children to the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. Okay. Remember that what I just said. Until the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. Now, a lot of people always talk about generational curses. I believe in them and I don't. You gotta understand what I'm saying. According to the scripture, generational curses only apply to who? God visited the iniquity of the fathers upon the children until the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. All right. So let's say you worship other gods. But you love God. Then you have children. And you're supposed to love God. They worship other gods. <laughs> Pay attention. It carries over if you don't love them. Now listen. And showing mercy unto the thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Pay attention. Let's read that again. And showing mercy to thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. How is love perfected? 
You love your brothers and sisters. You love everybody. You love God and you keep his commands. The thing about it is, he said, I showing mercy to thousands of them that love me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless to take his name in vain. If you love God, you won't abuse his name. And there's many ways to take the Lord's name in vain. That's why the first thing said, test the spirits to see if they are of God or not. Somebody who loves God is not going to go against his commands. He's not going to teach contrary to what he says. Oh, I love Jesus, but you can be a homosexual. You can be sexually immoral. I'm let me get there. Because I know y'all Well, homosexuality is not in the Ten Commandments. Yes, it is. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord, thy God. And that thou shalt not do any work. Thou nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor the stranger that is within thy gates. Now, God did explain. To us how to honor the Sabbath. He said, if a brother or sister is destitute of bread, bread or they need help on the Sabbath day, you can't help a soul on the Sabbath day. But one thing you're going to understand, you're going to learn to embrace the Sabbath. And let me explain this to you. The Sabbath is not Sunday. I remember when I first found God and I used to go to church and, and I'll come home on church on Sunday. I see a lot of people cutting the grass on Sunday. I'm like, they don't supposed to be doing that. That's what I used to think. Then I start realizing today is Sunday, not the Sabbath. Mm -hmm. They okay to cut their grass on Sunday. Uh, I might be speaking over a lot of y'all here today. Mm -hmm. But God says, you love me, you keep my Sabbath day. That's all throughout the Bible. Even in the book of the prophets, it's in there. The Sabbath day is holy. Mm -hmm. It said, you get better keep it holy. So let's say you go to church on Sunday. But Saturday, you work. Mm. Or Sabbath day, you work. Are you keeping God's commands? Mm. I ain't saying you're helping somebody out because they need help. I'm saying you're doing it to exactly what he's saying not to do. You see how the devil turns the word of God upside down? You think you're keeping the Sabbath, but you're not. But one thing over time, the truth is going to start engrafting in your heart. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work. Thou nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy counter, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. So even if you, let's say you run a company, you're supposed to make your employees work on the Sabbath day. Hmm. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth to see it all that is them is, and rested the Sabbath day. Well, for the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Listen when he said, first of all, again, my commandments are not grievous. It's ten of them. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Mm -hmm. If you don't love your father and your mother and you disrespect them and you call yourself a Christian, you're not made perfected in love because you're not keeping his commands. Thou shalt not kill. What the Bible talks about, hatred is like killing. That's like a murderer. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Now you got physical adultery. Now, and you got fornication. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Now adultery, in the biblical sense, is between husband and wife. So I know you was like, homosexuality is not in there. Yes, it is. You got to understand what God's order is. Mm -hmm. God made male and female. He said, it's not good that man should be alone, so I'm going to make him a helpmate suitable for him. And he made him one man. And as a man and a woman, you should not commit adultery against your wife or your husband. So that sums it up right there. Thou shalt not steal. You can't say you're a Christian and continue to steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. You can't say you're a Christian or a believer in Christ. And lie on other folks. Thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's house. Thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's wife. Nor his manservant. Nor his manservant. Nor his ox. Nor his ass. Nor anything that is in thy neighbor's. That is 
the Ten Commandments. You should not want what nobody else has. So he said, if the love of God is made perfected in you, you keep his commandments. It's very simple. Now, am I saying it's going to happen overnight? No, but it could. So people, it's time for us to wake up in the Christian faith. You know, this is weird, right? Not weird, but it's 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 amazing. But let me tell you something. I was talking to we had a new a new worker that started working with us. He's a young guy, probably about twenty three years old or so, trying to find his way. And one thing, like when we get new employees, I always let people know what I am. Let me let me make that clear to you. I'm gonna bring up my faith to any new employee that comes in that job. I'm gonna let them know where I stand as a Christian. And some kind of conversation or something, it's gonna come out. God makes sure I does do that. So I was talking to a, the new cat, the new young guy. And I was talking about my faith. And he was like, I'm young and I'm single, but I love God. I'm a Christian, but I'm a whore. He's like, I'm whorish. I was like, I understand what you're saying. I was young and whorish too. And I was like, well, that's not justification that you're single. So you got the right to be a whore. I was like, no. I said, what did the word of God say? I said, he said, no fornicator would inherit the kingdom of God. And he was like, I want a wife, but I'm not ready for a wife. I want to get this out of my system. I was like, well, how can you be ready for something if you ain't trying or behaving like a husband by sleeping with other, mother, mother, women, other women? I wasn't being mean to him. I was just telling him straight up. If you say you love God, you keep his commands. You see why the word of God is not going forward in a lot of people's lives and a lot of people's churches? It's because... The commandments are not being taught. Now, that's not all of it. The New Testament and, and Proverbs and other things show us how to walk. Wisdom books show us how to understand and show us what to be careful of. But the Ten Commandments are the basics. How do you know love is perfected? If you love me, you keep my commands. Let's say I'm, I'm, married, I'm a married man and I spread the gospel. Let's say every week I go cheat on my wife. Well, I got the first part, or I confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. But I'm not keeping his commands. Now, let's go back. The Bible says, test the spirits, whether they be of God or not. Now, you can take that to the bank. That applies to every aspect of your life, friends, family members, everybody. Now the Bible says not to keep company with unbelievers. Be not friendship with the world. So how do you know if people are friendship with the world? They disobey God's commands. No matter how much they say they love Jesus, but if they continuously, no repentance, no change, they can't say they love God. That's why God says many will come to me on that faithful day and say, Lord, Lord, have I done this, that, and that, and that in your name? They're like, I don't know you. Hmm? Depart from me, you have work in equity. He said, rebellion is like the sin of witchcraft. When you go against God's commands, love is not, the love of God is not made perfect in you. Hmm. And that's the truth. I don't care who you are. I don't care if you're the best mega church preacher on the planet. One thing about God does when he pours his spirit on you, he's going to make you line up with his scripture. You see, he, then he's talking about, that's a lot of false teachers. A lot of false prophets have entered the world. Pay attention to what's being taught to you. Let me pause and I will continue.